have you ever envisioned what your life would look like when you got older? I used to think about what my life would look like 20, 30, and even 50 years from now. Joyful, able to keep up with my grandkids, skin glowing from years of taking care of my health. Not once did I imagine that I would not be in my right or my full mind. Well, that is until I found out that Alzheimer's or related dementias occur in one of three seniors over the age of 65, and that two out of three sufferers are women, and that the incidence of Alzheimer's in African Americans is two to three times greater than it is in non-Hispanic whites. So I identify as a woman, I identify as a black adult, and I'd like to live well beyond the age of 65. So where does that leave my dreams of my more seasoned years? Scary and disappointing. But what is even more scary to me is the fact that the medical researchers and companies that are working on future developments for this disease are not including me. They are not considering me in those future developments. And by me, I'm referring to African Americans, black people in the United States. Alzheimer's research needs more African American participants. Alzheimer's clinical trials Need more, Alzheimer's, need more African American participants. Less than 5% of clinical trials participants for Alzheimer's therapies are African American adults. Across the top 30 plus Alzheimer's research centers in the country, less than 13% of those research assessments come from African American adults. So African Americans are more likely to get this disease, but we're not a part of the solution to finding a cure for this disease. This is a moral problem. But it's also an economic burden as well. Close to $100 billion in the African American community are tied up in the care of a loved one suffering from this devastating disease. So why is it that we get left out of Alzheimer's research and clinical trials that could have tremendous benefit for our community? Is it that we get left out of these trials and these research studies? Or is it simply that not enough African Americans participate in research? I believe that is both. Only recently has a research community challenged study designs that are not inclusive. And most of the published studies that we use to understand Alzheimer's disease have not included minority populations. But there are historical barriers as well. Take, for example, the historical Tuskegee syphilis experiments. As an African-American adult, the pain of those studies still stings today. The history of Henrietta Lacks, whose cancer cells are immortalized and established a billion dollar industry without her knowledge or her consent, further aggravates that pain. Hashtag pay healers family. Unethical treatment of African-Americans in this country by the medical community has resulted in mistrust. This mistrust is not a thing of the past. Even today, African Americans report high levels of discrimination when seeking medical treatments and believe that medical research is biased against people of color. Black women are three to four times more likely than white women to die from pregnancy complications. Even in my own family, I have family members who have been complaining for years that their doctors think that they are crazy and they don't believe that their pains and their physical ailments are real. Mistrust of the medical community is a major research barrier, but there are others. Fear, transportation issues, lack of understanding. I mean, what is this research about really? How does a given research study benefit me? And what is the benefit of this research for society as a whole? Transportation issues, not enough time, not enough money, and then there's stigma. I want to be a part of the solution to making sure that I, my family, and my friends can keep our minds right. That's why I'm standing here today, to urge you, to urge my fellow scientists, and to urge my black community, we need more African Americans to participate in Alzheimer's research and clinical trials. We need more African Americans to participate in research and clinical trials, not just because it's fair, 
but because it can help us to understand the disease and it can help us to reduce and eliminate disparities in this devastating disease. African Americans have many things that may prevent them from participating in research. Even as a scientist, I've thought about what are the things that would prevent me as an individual from participating in research. But when I do my own research, I recognize that research can't be done if you don't have people to do it in. Let's think, for example, about biomarkers. Biomarkers that are used to diagnose Alzheimer's rely on changes that are happening in the brain and in the body. For example, in late stages of Alzheimer's disease, tangles exist in the brain, and these tangles can be identified in early stages through measurement of a protein called tau. A growing number of small studies suggest that the levels of tau are lower in Afri African Americans compared to non-Hispanic whites. These studies are small in size, and it's not clear yet if their results will be replicated. If treatments are developed then based on the measurement of this protein called tau, and it's thought that the levels are lower in African Americans, then that means that African Americans would not benefit from those treatments. But we see this, for example, in other areas as well. Take, for example, hypertension drugs, in which the most effective treatments are ACE inhibitors. That is, except for in us, in African Americans, calcium blockers or antidiuretics are the most effective treatments. The same could be true for differences in Alzheimer's. But we won't know if researchers aren't looking. And researchers can't look if they don't have enough people to look in. So how do we increase research participation amongst African American adults? First, we need to raise awareness and education in our communities. Researchers have a major responsibility to help educate and to help inform African American communities who are most impacted by this disease about the research that they're conducting. Researchers can explain, for example, what they do with blood uh, samples or donated brains how they use that in research, and how they make sure that the studies that they do are safe and that those studies are secure. Second, researchers can help elevate the stories of those African Americans that have participated in Alzheimer's research. We can elevate those stories so that other African American individuals can hear about their experiences and can learn what helped them to overcome their hesitations and major barriers. Third, Researchers need to engage the community with their research studies before they begin. Can you imagine if someone wants to conduct research on you, shouldn't you have some input into how that research would be conducted? Fourth, after researchers complete the research studies, they can take the study findings back to the community, show the benefits of an individual's contribution to that research, and how that research helped benefits everyone and moves us closer to finding a therapy for this disease. Fifth, this list is exhaustive, isn't it? <laughs> we need for institutions and agencies to get behind and fund the training and research support of African American and black scientists who are vested in research for Alzheimer's that directly impacts our communities. Lastly, the African American community, as well as researchers, can come together and put the pressure on big pharma and industries that are working on clinical trials for Alzheimer's therapies. We want to put pressure on them to make sure that the demographics of the participants in their clinical trials represent the demographics of the United States for which this drug, once it's FDA approved, will ultimately serve. As an African American, as an African-American adult who is a basic science researcher that studies Alzheimer's disease in African-Americans, I know what's at stake. We have to be a part of making sure that the greatest advances in Alzheimer's research and therapies don't miss us. We have to make sure that we can keep our minds right for generations to come. Thank you.